Okay, so in the first video we looked at quite a weak submission. Uh, this is a slightly better submission, so we're going to go through and highlight some of the things that the, this report does better than the first one. So if we look at the title, uh, Determining Drug Concentration, again this is actually quite a weak title. It doesn't dramatically improve on what we had in the first one, which was just standard curve. Uh, but we do at least know that we're trying to determine what concentration a drug is at. But again, there's no real context. So again, this title would probably only get one or two of the marks available. Looking at the aims, this experiment was designed to see whether a drug reached a certain threshold in the blood. Okay, so we've got a bit more of a rationale here as to why the experiment was done. So we do know that we need to determine how much drug is present in, a, in blood. But it doesn't give us any information about why that's important. So the aims, again, are better than the original report, but still slightly weak. So you'd probably be looking at somewhere around about four or five marks out of the 10 available. As with the first report, this student has not provided any kind of context for the results. So there needs to be a description of what the results show. OK, so that's an area of weakness. So they would get nothing for the description. And when we look at the tables, the first thing that we notice is that this, these tables have actually been labelled as figures, which is wrong. So tables and figures are discrete entities within a report and should be labelled as such. So this should be labelled as table one. The second thing is when you start off a legend by saying table showing the absorbance values, that doesn't need to be there. This uh, legend could be much, much better if it just said table one absorbance readings at 500 nanometers. It's not perfect because it doesn't uh, provide some of the information, but it's much better than figure one table showing. OK, so that's something to bear in mind. One thing they have improved is that the concentration, we now have units for the concentration. So we know exactly what concentration the, the, uh, the units this concentration was measured in. We do know what wavelength the absorbance was measured at as well. Slight weakness is that we have all the absorbance readings given to three decimal places, but then we suddenly jump up to a ridiculous number of decimal places for the calculated mean and standard deviation. Now, although these are actually correct, if you calculate them, you should always try to give your mean to the same number of decimal places as your raw data. So this would be better expressed as 0 0.152. So we're rounding up because of that six. And likewise with the standard deviation, it would be better to express this as 0 0.006, okay, instead of this ridiculous number of decimal places. So that's a weakness. Again, same sort of errors here. We got figure two instead of table two, starting it with table showing. We don't know what the unknowns are, uh, so that's a bit of a weakness. We haven't defined that those are patient samples. And here we actually have a bit of a mix of the number of decimal places that we're giving our mean and our standard deviation to. So whenever you're giving a mean or a standard deviation, try to make sure you're consistent with the number of decimal places and try to make sure it matches with the raw data. OK, so these tables would probably get around about 50, 60 percent of the marks available. So we're looking at somewhere around about seven or eight marks out of the 15 here. The student has given the equation of the line, but it's not clear where that has actually come from. And if we look at the standard curve, we can actually see this student hasn't forced the standard curve through the origin. So if we don't have any of the drug present in our, uh, our zero sample, we're not going to get any absorbance. So it's really important when you have a standard curve that you make sure it gets forced through the origin. You can see both the trend line here would cross the axis somewhere around about here, and this would come down and not hit the zero either. So make sure when you're plotting your graphs in Excel that you actually force the trend lines through the origin as well. Strengths of this graph, we do have the labels on the axes, so we know exactly what's been measured. We know what wavelength it's been measured at. We have the units for the concentration. How could this be improved? Well, apart from forcing through the origin, as we've already discussed, this title here of standard curve doesn't actually tell us what the standard curve is of, so we would need to know that it's of drug X. But if you start reading scientific papers, you will see that no papers will actually have a title within a figure like this. So what we would do is we would have a legend underneath saying figure one, and then we would fully describe what the standard curve actually shows in the figure legend so that the figure and the legend that accompanies it is a standalone element with the paper. 
So you could look at the, at the figure, you could read the legend for that figure and understand what that figure shows without having to read the rest of the report. So for the graph here, again, we're probably looking at around about 10 marks out of the 15, mainly because of this title, mainly because of not forcing you through the origin. The student has provided a table of the converted data, which is good, but again, far too many decimal places. I would suggest that for these kind of data where you're looking at a concentration, you could probably take that down to one, maybe two decimal places. So for this first reading, you could express it as 15.1 or 15.08, and that would be a much, much better way of representing these values. And again, when you calculate the mean and the standard deviation, try to match those to the actual number of decimal places of your readings. In terms of the bar graph here, well, the student has chosen an appropriate graph. Okay, so as we discussed in the first video, these patients are all individuals, so we can't use a line graph. So it's better to use a bar graph here because we are to have we do have discrete individuals. So that's good. We know what the concentration is and we know the units, so we know what's being uh, measured. It would be beneficial perhaps to have a, a label on the axis here saying patient. And this series one label here, which is a default in Excel, doesn't add anything to this graph at all, so it can be removed. Again, we've got a title here, so the concentration of drug in blood. So it does describe what's there. But again, we wouldn't use this kind of a formatting in a scientific paper. So you would need to have a figure, a legend under there, which would describe that figure and what it shows. In terms of the discussion, Again, the discussion is fairly descriptive. So we do say that the therapeutic threshold has been reached in patients one and two and exceeded in patient four. Unfortunately, and nowhere in this report are those thresholds actually defined. So although what the student is saying is correct in terms of what is known in the background information that's provided to the student, they haven't actually stated it in the report. So if you are talking about thresholds or levels or amounts, it's really important that you actually give facts and figures to back that up. So this uh, discussion could be dramatically improved if the student actually listed what the therapeutic threshold was, what the toxic threshold was. Okay. They have made some attempt to actually um, be critical of it. So the drug seems to affect people differently and this would need to be considered. So that is an important consideration in this case. If the drug thresholds are not being reached equally by individuals, then they would need to be monitored quite closely. So for that discussion, again, I'd probably be looking somewhere around about the 50%, so 15 out of the 30 for that. The student has provided a reference and it is correctly formatted. So you should always provide the author or list of authors, the year the article was published, the title of the article, the name of the journal that it appears in, the volume number and the pages. So this is a completely made up um, reference, but it just gives you the key points. The weakness here is that although the students provided a reference list, there is no citation of that within the actual text. So as an academic, I don't know where that uh, resource has been used. So there's a little bit of evidence of background reading, but it's not clear where that background reading has actually been used in this uh, submission. So overall, this is a big improvement on the first submission. Uh, this would probably come in somewhere around about the 50, 55% mark. So this would be a 2-2 submission.